video, we're going to have a look at ArchiCAD 21 options, element attributes, and a lot of these other settings and how they all relate to one another. Now, when we're drawing, particularly with our 3D models, every element is based on a building material. Now, the only thing that's maybe more important than a building material may be a composite because it's a combination of building materials. So we'll go to that one first, just so then we can go, say, down the line from there. What is a composite? A composite is usually going to be a wall, a roof, or a slab. And instead of just being a big, fat, dumb structure that doesn't have any definition or a basic shape, it's going to be a combination or a composite made up of multiple building elements. So that, for instance, might be a 270 cavity brickwork or a brick wall, meaning that it's 110 millimeters of brick, 50 millimeters of cavity or airspace, and then another 110 millimeters of brick. When we click on that, we can see that that's how this is made. We have a line which defines the outside, a brick structural, which is the building material, another solid line, the inside, a space, a cavity or an airspace, it could be insulation, of course, as well. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Solid line, brick, and then line again. And we can change all of these settings. Now, what are these settings made from? This one here is a building material. So when we click on this, this is all of the building materials that we have built into ArchiCAD. And we can change all of these. We can make our own. But again, we have to be very, very careful if we want to edit these, because as soon as we edit them, it may stop other tools from working that currently use those settings. So we could always duplicate and create our own, but be very careful in deleting. What else? We have solid lines. What's this line based on? This is based on our line settings. And you can see that there's a lot of lines built into ArchiCAD. Some are more graphic than others. Solid line, dash lines, dash dot, double dash. These are the standard ones and then the slightly less common ones towards the bottom. What else is there? There is the line pen. So we've got line type and then we've got our pen type. Click on that and we see that this is different colors. These colors may actually represent a color but more than likely they're representing a line thickness. So we see that currently pen 1 is black, but it's a 0 0.13 pen. 2 is 0 0.15, and generally this is made so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger to a point. Now that's limited here at 0.35. I don't really love these pens. I'm going to show you how to make your own pens and adjust those settings. What's very important, however, is you've probably got 19 as a white number, um, and I would also recommend that you make 11 white because commonly, unless they've changed it recently, in ARCHICAD um, 11 and 19 should be representing white. So we're going to leave that for now. We understand this mostly. Now once you've created or edited a composite, you then need to choose what is it for. Now if it's a 270 cavity brick wall, it's probably going to be used as a wall. But if you're creating something else, maybe that is a 300 mil floor structure suspended, then that suggests that it's used for a floor. But of course, we could use the same thing for a wall. We could potentially use the same thing for a roof. And we could potentially use the same thing for a mesh. All right. Let's get out of this. Now we've explained how that works, building materials, sorry, now that we've explained composites, let's go into the building materials because that's the biggest part of it. We see here that we have, again, quite a few building materials built into ArchiCAD. Of course, we can make our own as well. Again, I stress, do the same thing. If you want to create your own, start with one. Use one that already matches settings. For instance, if you want to make your own brick or edit brick, start with a brick and then start to edit it. So go new and duplicate rather than editing the original. Of course you can change the name. You can change the fill. 
Now, how do we get this fill? Where does this come from? There's a lot of different fill settings already built into Archicad, and again, we can make our own fills. We can make our own lots of things, but it does take time. And we can change the pen color of that fill. We can change the fill orientation. We can change the surface. So in a previous version of Archicad, we're going back a few years now, we didn't have anything called building materials. What we had was surfaces and they were called materials. And that was effectively a color, a name, a vectorial hatch or a fill, and a picture. And that made the surface, but it didn't have the BIM realistically. It didn't have the building information modeling. What is that? Intersection priority and all these properties. Information about the product about the building material, about the manufacturer, the description, the physical properties, thermal conductivity, density, heat capacity, embodied energy, embodied carbon. Why do we need these? Why do we use these? Because this allows us to create quantities. This allows us to do environmental studies and determine the thermal abilities of our building, determine the amount of embodied energy, embodied carbon in our buildings. So again, Archicad has so much in it. It's very rich. It's also therefore incredibly detailed and it takes quite a while to learn all of its functionality and possibly you may never use all of its functionality because it's designed to be able to use by a lot of different people in a lot of different facets of architecture. All right, close that one down. This is just an overview of all these different element attributes. Working back from the maybe the most complex one, a composite, which is made up of building materials, which is also made up of surfaces. What's a surface? Like I said, it's a color, and we can change that color and how that works. Now, we have different ways of viewing this color. We can view this in our basic engine, in our OpenGL, and the OpenGL is the way that we'll mostly be navigating the 3D world, and we have our Cine render, and this is the way that we create a visualization to try to create something that's photorealistic as much as possible. That's the most photorealistic that we can get in Archicad, otherwise we'd need to be using an outside tool. Now Cine Render is a tool out of Cinema 4D, which is, I guess, a bigger program made by Maxon, which we could also use out of Archicad to get an even better photorealistic impression. Now in Archicad it's a little bit clunky and it's not incredibly fast um, compared to other programs that do it more intuitively. We've got a lot of settings that we can change in here, and that's part of the problem. Unless you really understand this, you will probably not know how to change these settings or what to change them to. Again, the slight problem that we have is we need to independently change settings from Basic, OpenGL, and Cine Render Engine. The only option that we have to that is once we've created maybe something in Cine Render Engine, we could say Match Settings. So then we could say Update Basic Settings from Cine Render or of course do it the other way around or from here and then say Cine Render update Cine Render from basic. So we could go either way to make those settings work for us. If we go back into our OpenGL again a surface has a hatch or a fill linked to that. So then we can choose from any of the fills. Why would we want to do this? Maybe we're using brickwork. Maybe the surface is brick. So let's say it's red brick. So for red brick we want it to look probably red and we want to have a vectorial hatch which represents bricks. Now there's lots of different ways to do that. Why do we use this? What is this? This is a texture. What we can see here is a texture and that is a image. It's a JPEG or a bitmap based image. It's just about pixels. So this is going to look nice but it's not going to be used in our vector drawings. So for our vector drawings such as our floor plans, elevation sections, we might want to have a vectorial hatching and so that's going to be something with lines, something that could potentially be exploded into lines, something that can have a pen weight. So we have both a 3D representation and a 2D representation and again we can override those settings here as well. So we can override in our composites, we can override in our building materials, we can override in our surfaces 
And we can, of course, go back one step again, back to our fills. We can create our own fills. We can edit our fills. We can change the spacing and sizings of our fills. Now, this is a little bit hard to see at the moment. Let's try to find one that's a little bit clearer. Let's change the scale to 100%. This is frustrating. Why isn't it showing me? All right. Uh, I haven't seen this in ArchiCAD 21 before, but it's not letting me actually see these patterns. I don't know why. I'm thinking it's an issue with um, the setup of 21, but I'll have to look at this anyway. So what we see here, these patterns that we see on screen aren't necessarily the real patterns. That's actually just defined by the screen only pattern. The spacing, of course, we have different types of fills. We have solid fills, vectorial fills, symbol fills, and we also have image fills. Just to explain these quickly, an image fill is like it suggests an image, a bitmap or a JPEG that we can make into a fill so we can particularly use it on a floor plan. Our Vectorial fills is based on a shape, a spacing of that shape, and an angle of that shape. So it works great for something like brickwork. Then we have symbol fills, which is a bit more complicated. That's great if it's a complicated shape. We can create, we can create these, and uh, the most common one, maybe for the definition of this, would be something like gravel or um, concrete. I'm not sure if I'll find that very quickly. Concrete. It's really hard to see here. Now we can create these and later on I'll show you how to make these and of course I've done it before as well. Uh, and then finally up the top we have solid fills. So our uh, percentage fills are effectively a percentage of that. So if this was black then we can make this lighter or darker. Of course we're fiddling with this so that's supposed to be 50%, 25%, 75%. Solid, of course, is solid, and empty is, of course, empty. So these are the most standard ones. Um, HackyCAD's got quite a good range here already, and again, we can customize and edit any of these as we wish. Finally, option element attributes. In addition to all of the things we've seen so far, our surfaces, building materials are made up of our colors and pens and our line types. These are the last ones we'll look at for now in this video. Pens and colors. We see that ArchiCAD has built in a few different options. Print colors to cut fills. Now, the reason why it does this is so that we can use colors when we're working in our model, and then we can change it to black and white when we go to print. And we've got a few different options available to us here. Again, I'm going to show you later how to customize these and make your own colors. I also tend to not change pens working from my model to my documentation or to my layout for printing. I tend to work on my model. If I'm wanting it to be a black pen, I use a black pen. Why does that work? We need to use things like colors when we're using something like AutoCAD because the color helps us to understand line thickness. But in ArchiCAD, we have the ability to show true line weight, which means if I draw some lines or draw a wall, I'm a long way out. I'm a very, very long way out. Let's make that four meters long. Zoom all the way in. I'm at one to, I'm working at a scale of one to 100 at the moment. So if I zoom in far enough, you'll see that I could zoom, zoom, zoom forever, and it would always be a thin line. Another way of defining that would be an, a hair line. Now if I right click and say show true line weight, you'll see that those lines become thicker. And more importantly, the more I zoom, the thicker it will become. So true line weight is a really great function in ArchiCAD, which means we can see our lines or our walls, what we're drawing, not necessarily as they are just in our in our 3D environment in ArchiCAD, but also as they'll print. So we could see if we were trying to draw this wall, and we've actually got a representation of our render or our plasterboard, it looks like it's right here, and we can see it here. It's fantastic. But at 1 to 100, when we go to print it, it's just going to look like a big blob.
and that's not necessarily helpful. So that might help us understand we either need to change the pen weight, or if we want to see the definition of this wall, maybe we need to be working at a scale of 1 to 50. Again, true line weight is a fantastic tool to help us understand the true thicknesses of lines, and for that reason I don't actually use colours when I'm drawing. I use blacks if I want it to be black, and then I use colours when I want it to be coloured. So that's pens, we can change those, we can edit those, we can import those, we can create our own. And then finally, before I bore you all to tears, line types. There's a lot of inbuilt line types, and again, we can edit these, we can draw our own, and some of them are really useful, very complicated, like insulation and things like this to show a hedge. So we can either edit existing ones, or we can draw something and then copy paste it into line types to create our own. That's the end of our option element attributes explanation uh, and in later videos we'll talk about how to create those but at the moment I just want to give you an overview of what they are and how to use them.